I would like to mention that this meeting is being recorded so that students who are unable to be here today can watch our presentation at a later time. My name is Camilla and I am your MC for today. I'm in my second year of mechanical engineering with a minor in digital. Not too long ago, I was in your shoes. I remember how excited I was to be accepted into the Schulich School of Engineering, but also uncertain as to what to expect. Our goal here today is for you to connect with us, to learn more about what Schulich has to offer, and to get you excited about the University of Calgary community. There will be a Q&A period at the end of our presentation. However, we encourage you to use the chat function to type in your questions at any point during the presentation. We have Jenny, Janelle, Dexter, and Tyler from the Engineering Student Center monitoring the chat and can respond to your questions as they come throughout the entire meeting. You can find the chat function on your control panel, which should be at the bottom of your screen, just below the presentation. When you pose a question in the chat box, it will be sent to everyone in the event. We want to make sure we answer as many of your questions as possible, so please send them our way at any time. To kick this presentation off, I would now like to introduce Dr. Bill Rosehart, Dean of Schulich School of Engineering. Thank you and, and welcome everyone. Welcome to one of the top engineering schools in Canada. It is, uh, it's really great to have you here today. So what I'm gonna do to start, because uh, Camelia just said that we've got people monitoring the chat and there's nothing more fun to see how quick they can check things coming in the chat. So I'd like everyone to type into the chat one thing that you're looking forward to doing next year as a student in the Schulich School of Engineering. Let's hear your great ideas. They're starting to come in. Okay, people monitoring the chat, you're getting all of this, right? Absolutely, every word of it. There we go. I love what I'm seeing, um, you know, making new friends, being in person, being in our design space, designing things, being part of our makerspace activities, our digital innovation labs, getting to know more friends. In fact, there's two of you in here today whose dad I went to school with uh, 30 years ago. And so the friends you meet uh, in your engineering school, you will know for the rest of your life. We are one of the top engineering schools in Canada. When I look at our alumni and stay in contact with them, it's so exciting to see where their careers, where their life journeys go. We have graduates who have been an astronaut. We have graduates who are doctors, who are lawyers. We have a, a two-time graduate that was a co-founder of Uber. Uh, Laura, a relatively recent graduate, works for NASA, where she's chief of robotics operation. Manpreet, uh, who just graduated uh, just over a year ago, is studying at Oxford now as a prestigious Rhodes Scholar. You name it, we've got graduates. We've got graduates at Microsoft, at Google. We've got graduates leading some of the multi-billion dollar energy companies right here in Calgary. We've got graduates making contributions in our community, local and global, um, in every discipline you can think of. And the, when I look at your answers in the chat about meeting new people, about working in teams, about designing, that's what you're gonna learn at the Schulich School of Engineering. You're gonna learn how to solve problems. You're gonna learn how to work creatively, work in teams, being able to take math and science and apply it to come up with solutions um, to not only solve the problems that are facing our communities, but come up with solutions to things to advance how we operate day to day. And so we take for an example, the Zoom session that we have going on today. When I was a student, if we had to go through a pandemic, school would have been over. No one would have been able to continue. But because of technology, look at what we're able to do. For those that are listening to their session with their parents, I think they would be nodding in agreement. 
What we have now because of engineering is phenomenal. And your choice to come to the Schulich School of Engineering means you're going to be developing and creating that next generation of technology that your grandkids will be sitting there and, and can't believe, oh, they only had Zoom. And so it's going to be an exciting time. It, it is a lot of work, um, that's a true thing, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, working in our makerspace, playing in our digital innovation zone. Um, we, we have so many teams and clubs and get involved in everything and really, really enjoy yourself. I know there'll be lots of questions about what's gonna happen in the fall. And it's hard to imagine being in person in the fall when we're in the middle, if not hopefully maybe the peak of the third wave of the pandemic. We are very hopeful, you know, listening to the uh, government of Alberta, as well as our, our, our health experts, that with the rollout of the vaccinations, we will be in person in the fall. We will plan for everything. If we've been able to operate the last year and a half remotely, we are ready for everything. Uh, but our expectation is we'll be able to welcome you in person. We recognize if that happens, there'll still be some people that may not be able to come in person and we'll work really hard to find ways to accommodate you. As our Associate Director of Student Services said to me, if we've been able to manage the year and a half, been able to graduate students twice in the middle of this pandemic, we are really good at finding solutions to support you and support your success. Camelia, back over to you. Thank you, Dean Rosehart. Navigating my engineering degree and course requirements has been made easy with academic supports provided through the Engineering Student Center. You can think of this place as a one-stop shop for academic advising. The Engineering Student Center is located in Engineering Block C in room 205, otherwise known in short form as ENC 205 in person. However, Currently, support is being offered through virtual walk-ins on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. There are many ways to connect with the Engineering Student Center. You can book an appointment online with an academic advisor using the QLIS app. Advisors are also available by email, and you can send any questions that you have to enginfo at ucalgary.ca. All first year students in the Schulich School of Engineering take the same first year common core program in mathematics, sciences, computing, engineering principles, and design and communications. This provides a foundation for your engineering training and exposes you to the variety of engineering disciplines from which you will choose a program major for your second year. I would now like to introduce Janelle Ward, academic advisor in the ESC who will provide more information on enrollment and fall 2021. Hi everybody, as Camilla said, my name is Janelle. I'm an academic advisor in the Engineering Student Center or what you might hear us call the ESC. I wanted to briefly talk to you about your first year course enrollment. The first and most important thing to know is that different from other faculties, we will be doing your first year course enrollment for you. This is being done to improve your experience and to support accurate registration. Some of you will have already received the Common Core request form via email, along with some detailed information on the blocks. If you haven't yet, don't worry. We are sending them out each week to newly accepted and deposit paid students. Please check your UCalgary email or your personal email or any junk mail folders, as this email will come to you from the end email enginfo at ucalgary.ca email. The blocks are set up to support you and how you best or how you choose to do your in-person learning. Noting that your first year will have a combination of synchronous, meaning having to be present in class at a certain time, or asynchronous, working at your own pace, time, and place components. You will still have to plan to be involved in school activities Monday to Friday during the day, However, you can show your preference via the core survey, which schedule works best for you. So when your friends are waiting for their enrollment to open, you can sit back and enjoy your free time with a nice cup of coffee, a tea, or for me, a Slurpee, um, or whatever wish you, do, wish you want to spend some quality time. If you have not already done so, please join us 
for the end registration session on October, or sorry, April 20th from four to five mountain time, where we go into first year general enrollment questions. We'll be reviewing the blocks, the academic calendar, the online student center, the survey, transfer credit, and much more. This session will be recorded if you're not able to attend. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, Camilla. Thank you, Janelle. These are the 10 common core classes that every first year engineering student will take. They provide the foundation for all of your engineering learning. Personally, my favorite first year course was Eng 200 because you learn how to work better as a team while building some pretty cool projects. While in your first year, program placements will take place in the middle of the winter term and you will decide what engineering program to pursue. You can earn your degree in chemical, civil, electrical, energy, geomatics, mechanical, software engineering, and our newest major biomedical engineering. You will rank our programs from your most preferred to your least preferred and submit those rankings. We know that getting into the program of your choice is important and we guarantee your first choice program if you complete your 10 courses within your first year and earn a B average, which is a 3.0 GPA out of 4.0 or higher in all of those 10 common core courses. In addition to academic support, Schulich supports you to find relevant work experience that make you stand out to employers and more importantly, allow you to apply what you learned in your classes. I would now like to introduce Jenny Krukshank, Associate Director of Student Services, who will tell you more about the work and internship opportunities at Schulich. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to you at Calgary. We're super excited to see how many students are attending today. I'm going to talk to you about your career because everyone knows that's what your goal is as you contribute through your uh, academic advising and through your academic program. So we have two great programs. The first is summer work terms, which is through the engineering career practicum. So it's essentially like a co-op. It's available to first and second year students. It, is, it gives you exclusive access to a career practicum job board and also job support. So you can learn how to get a job if you haven't had one previously. It will include career readiness training, some really easy things for you to do, support from our career advisors on our team, and give you an opportunity to gain a certificate uh, that indicates to employers that you've got experience as you head into your next step. The next program, we can go to the next slide, is our work experience on internship. So the Engineering Career Center is set up specifically for you as engineering students. We run a number of programs through that, but our most popular is the internship program. It is a 12 to 16 month long internship working between your third and fourth year. The difference between this and other programs, often called internship, co-op, those words are used interchangeably. The difference is that you have a lot of flexibility in our program. You can look for a job where it works best for you. You get to interview, you get to choose. Employers also get to interview. We have thousands of job postings for you to work from. You start in the beginning of your third year, you apply for the internships, our accessibility and uh, eligibility is very open. So above a 2.0 GPA, and you're not missing more than two courses, you're eligible for internship. And then you complete your job placement, which is paid between your third and fourth year. So it's a great way for you to not only fund your education, but get experience as you move forward in your career. We're excited for this program. We've done a lot of work to increase our student participation and employer participation. And we know that by the time you get to third year, you'll be excited to be working too, and then head into your career as an engineer with work experience behind you. Hang on a second, I think we're getting a new message. I'm Rex, the U Calgary mascot and number one Dinos fan. This incoming class of 2025 is looking dynamite. <laughs> Cheering for Dinos is my thing. Without you guys, I'd be a Tyrannosaurus wreck. 
Jurassic times call for Jurassic measures, so I've got a roar some challenge just for you! Keep an eye on your inbox. I'll post details shortly. This challenge will be online, not in the field, so you won't have to worry about getting... Dinosaur. Complete my challenge and you'll enter to win the U at U Calgary Rex's Challenge Award, valued between 1,000 and 2,500 Canadian dollars. Be sure to watch your email for more instructions after the event. Go Dinos! That was information on the Rex Challenge that is happening after this event. Just like it was mentioned by Rex, you will be receiving an email for more instructions on how to win awards. I would now like to introduce Alan Okanovic, second year engineering student who is currently involved with the leadership program. Hello everyone, as Camilla had mentioned, my name is Alan Okanovic and I'm in the second tier or development tier of the engineering leadership program, which is the one, of, which is the one in the middle of the slide right here. I originally joined the program in my first year, and the reason why I joined was because I was intrigued by all the skills you could learn in the program, with just a few of them listed on the slide right here. From my experience in the program, I would say that in general, it teaches students the skills they normally would not learn in their regular engineering classes, but can be readily applicable in either the working world or even in school when it comes to group projects. Now, most skills fall under what is called emotional intelligence which in short is basically how you deal with your own emotions as well as how you communicate effectively with people to sound empathetic. One of these skills is called conflict resolution. For example, when you're in a group project and there's a disagreement on something and everyone is arguing about it and then this program will essentially teach you how would you handle that kind of situation properly and effectively so no one gets emotionally hurt, no one that feels as if their ideas are less of than others. This skill could also be used in this scenario where you might have screwed something up in a group project and everyone kind of hates you for it and you want to be and you want to apologize for it, but you're not sure how to make it sound sincere. So in this program, you'll learn the skills of how do you make a proper apology to someone or a group of people. Where you in a nutshell, you basically say, you know, what did you do wrong? How are you going to improve on it later on? And announcing that you'll never do it again. Another skill that you'll learn will be handling difficult conversations, which also falls under that emotional intelligence realm. So again, bringing it back to the group project scenario where there could be an issue with maybe one of your group members not putting in as much effort as everyone else in the group. I'm sure we've all had that kind of person in our group projects before, and you wanna speak with this individual regarding that, but you're afraid you might hurt their feelings or that they might take it as insulting or offensive. Well, through this program, you'll be able to learn how to properly manage those kind of situations and to talk to that person in a way that will, that will make them hate you or feel that you insulted them. Now, as you can see, the skills you learn in this program can be readily applicable in the real world and can help you quite a bit when it comes to social skills in group settings, not only in school, but also in the working world. Now, the time commitment for this program is relatively low in my opinion, as you're looking at attending an approximately one to two hour session once a month for the school year, plus an opening event and the engineering leadership conference, which is a whole day event, but it only happens once a year and it's, and it's usually towards the end of the year. I know this year it happened three Saturdays ago on March 27th and it had over 500 attendees. Now the engineering leadership conference is a great event to attend and as part of the leadership program you get access to attend this event now in this conference they usually bring in a bunch of presenters i think this year they had about 30 people presenting and throughout the day of the conference there'll be multiple sessions offered where you, where you can learn things like entrepreneurship skills or if you're interested in running your own business or just how it works then you'll learn about what it takes to start a business how to navigate that work-life balance as well as how to adapt your, your business to a changing economy if you're not interested in that kind of stuff, there's also sessions regarding inclusivity and in engineering, developing your personal brand, which is like how you would how you would promote yourself on social media platforms professionally, like LinkedIn, as well as student leadership, where you'll hear from Schulich students who are able to successfully run their own clubs and teams, which will be mentioned later on in this presentation, as well as some who even became the president of the Engineering Students Society or ESS or short, um, which you'll learn about later on as well. Now, I'd just like to bring attention to one particular session I liked at the conference, which was called Becoming a Successful Failure. 
And the main message behind this session was that it's important to fail fast. And what that means is that we need to fail often as humans and frequently because every time we fail, we improve upon ourselves and we learn from our mistakes so we'll become better people in the end. So in conclusion, the engineering leadership program teaches you a lot of skills that can help you out when it comes to social scenarios in school or in the workplace and can also provide you with opportunities to learn about entrepreneurship, time management, leadership, and emotional intelligence. And now I will pass it back to Camilla. Thank you, Alan. We will now shift gears from thinking internationally to thinking about Calgary and what makes the Schulich School of Engineering unique. We are excited to tell you more about our Maker Multiplex, an experiential environment where you essentially get to play. It is a series of labs where you can bring your ideas to life using new technologies. The Maker Multiplex was launched in 2018 to grow the Maker community on campus and is open to all you Calgary students. You have access to equipment and training to work on your own projects. There is a 3D printer room, metal and wood shop, sound and robotics lab, a welding shop, arts and textiles room, and a paint booth. After attending some of the workshops offered, students were able to build smartphone controlled mini bots, 3D print parts for class projects, and even learn how to properly fix all broken chargers. All the while having a lot of fun, picking up new engineering skills and connecting with others who have similar interests. It's really the ideal environment for us to share ideas and try experimental projects in a safe space to fail and learn. We will now watch a video that shows you various possibilities that the makerspace can be utilized for. Engineers build things to support students in becoming engineers. We've created our Maker Multiplex where they can do everything from 3D printing to working with metals and woods. We make these tiny little robotic cars that you can control with a phone using Arduino and adapt cars for toddlers with disabilities. Uh, we've come in here to do workshops for students that are coming in. We're currently planning workshops for girl guides in here. All engineering students are really encouraged to get a second level of knowledge, whether it's 3D printing something or learning how to machine something that you've created in SOLIDWORKS. They even teach circuit board design there and it really supplements your understanding of engineering and what it would be like to work. There really is something for everyone here. Like you can build cars, planes, rockets, rovers, motorcycles, you name it on any of our competition teams. You can also serve many social causes and communities through a ton of clubs and volunteer at any of the events and functions hosted on and off campus. And if you have a new initiative in mind, then this is the perfect place to establish it. Therefore, I would now like to introduce Juan Cepeda, a chemical engineering student with a minor in biomedical who is currently involved in multiple student societies and on a new technical team, Chem -E Car, that was launched this year. Thank you, Camilla, for the warm introduction. Hello, everyone. As Camilla mentioned, I'm currently finishing my second year of chemical engineering with a minor in biomedical engineering at the University of Calgary. Today, I want to share with you my personal experience in the different clubs and teams I'm be part of at the Schulich School of Engineering. Currently, I'm in the Executive Council for the Chemical Engineering Student Society, also known as SES, as the Vice President of Academic as well as the Vice President of External Affairs for the Biomedical Engineering Student Society. The purpose of this different engineering student societies is to enhance the undergraduate experience and provide professional development opportunities to students. How do we do this? We do this by hosting and organizing multiple academic and social events and activities. In the past, we've done social events such as movie nights, baking competitions, scavenger hunts, trivia nights, and much more and much more to help enhance the student experience. And we recently transferred these events to an online format this past year to continue serving students. This past year, as part of being on the council for each student society, I help host different events such as student prof mixers, internship panels, and social events with other faculties and universities. Through my involvement with these leadership positions, I was able to work and develop my soft skills, skills such as teamwork, leadership, 
and communication skills, which are very valuable when entering the workforce. This also helped me build and expand my, ne my network by meeting new friends and meeting people in the industry. Another club I was involved in this past year was the new technical club known as the Chemi Car. The Chemi Car is the student-led team where students from different majors get together to build a shoe-sized car that has to be powered and stopped by only using chemical means. Joining any technical team on campus is a great way to apply the theory and concepts learning class. And it's an excellent way to learn new hands-on skills, which will be very valuable when looking for an internship or a summer work camp. Personally, for me, these experiences have helped me uh, get a research position this, this upcoming summer. So I think, and I believe that joining any club we think Chulik will very be valuable to you. Throughout these past two years, being part of clubs and being involved with the Shulik School of Engineering community helped me build on my interpersonal skills and helped me meet some of my closest friends up to date. Therefore, I wanna end my speech with this piece of advice that I wish I knew when starting at the Shulik School of Engineering. And that is not to be afraid to get involved and to take advantage of every single opportunity that is given to you, whether that's attending an event, joining a student society, attending a seminar, attending a conference, or just participating in a campus trip, this experience will enhance your student, ex will, will enhance your experience at the Schulich School of Engineering and will make your engineering journey a lot more fun. And with that, I'll pass it back to Camilla. Thank you, Juan. So when you're a busy engineering student, learning more about leadership, jetting away from campus on an international experience and involved in a club or a team, you also need to take care of yourself. Shulik Wellness is an initiative to support you when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed and aimed to develop your resiliency. Shulik School of Engineering is there for you. Shulik Wellness supports you with having a positive mental health and has a dedicated engineering wellness space where you can enjoy some yoga, meditation, and pet therapy. Benefits of pet therapy include reducing anxiety because it is very calming to pet a puppy. The wellness space offers stress reduction workshops, and it is also a decompression zone where you can relax, chat with a friend, and play a game. Not many places on campus offer a calm and comfortable environment for you to unwind in. Of course, starting at a new school can be intimidating, but fall orientation can help with that. In September, you will join an orientation group full of your students from your block. We will welcome you by giving you your own Schulich scarf, a tradition that our school has partaken in for years. You will also learn the Engineering Cheer, a song that most Schulich students know, and also complete your first ever engineering design challenge, where you are given a problem to solve and, with a team, create a solution to address that problem. Personally, I had a super enthusiastic orientation leader that showed off all his patches that he put on his Schulich scarf, so I was a lot more excited to be a student at the Schulich after orientation. We know it is important to meet your peers and get to know people in your block, but it's also a good opportunity to connect with an upper year student through our first year mentoring program. You can ask a mentor questions about courses, professors, general tips for managing your course load and anything else that comes to mind. To see short video clips related to everything we have mentioned so far on internship, engineering leadership, global experiences, Maker Multiplex, and Schulich Wellness, please check out our website at schulich.ucalgary.ca slash you at ucalgary as can be seen on the screen. We have compiled these videos for you to view on your own time. And please scan this QR code so our team can ensure that you've participated in the event and be eligible to an early enrollment date. We have now reached the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for being here today and connecting with us. We hope that this presentation has helped you to see yourself at UCalgary and that you've gotten a taste of what life may be like at the Schulich School of Engineering. 
we would now like to take some time to address any questions or concerns you may have through the chat box. We have our student presenters still here online, as well as Jenny, Janelle, Tyler, and Dexter from the Engineering Student Center to continue to respond to your questions. Please go ahead now and start typing in your questions and also feel free to stay as long as you'd like and read through all the answers. If you don't have any questions, you are welcome to leave this meeting whenever you like and enjoy the rest of your day. If you have any questions in the future, please email us at enginfo at ucalgary.ca, again, as can be on the screen. Again, please start. feel free to start typing in your questions into the chat box, and don't forget to scan the following QR code to ensure that your attendance is counted. Perhaps if one of you can speak to um, when is the best time to join and apply for clubs as students? There is some questions about that. Yeah, I can go for that question. So usually all the student societies and technical clubs do recruitment sessions at the beginning of the fall term. And also we have another recruiting session at the beginning of the winter term. So I think just uh, going to informational sessions in at the beginning of each academic term is a great way to uh, to know when to get involved and when to sign up and apply to either be on the council or either be in an academic club. And just to add on to that, um, usually for executive applications, which would likely happen you know, at the end of your first year, um, that happens at the end of winter semester. So kind of starting March is approximately when people start or clubs start taking in applications for executive positions. So maybe you guys can also speak to, there's, there's several questions about um, should people take cost options during their first year? We of course recommend the 10 courses um, that are, are the main uh, core that are being focused on. What would you say, if you wanna to speak to that first year experience, would you recommend holding off on cost options um, and really focusing on the 10 core? I guess I can say I'll go. No worries. Um, I guess I could say a little bit about that. Um, from my personal experience, I've heard from other students say that six courses in the term can be a bit of work, and usually that would happen like your second year and onward. And since in your first year you are transitioning between high school and university, I would probably keep it up to 5-5, five, five, but there is also the option for spring and summer classes, which are basically you can take either in the spring from May to June or in the summer from July to August. I would recommend if you can take some cost options, I would recommend taking it in those. So then it also frees up a little bit of your courses in your fall and winter terms. Awesome answer. And just to note for everyone, um, Alan was referring to your spring summer after your first year. You are not able to take courses in engineering in advance of your first year because you technically haven't started engineering until the fall. And hi guys, it's Chanel from the Engineering Student Center again. I am just gonna quickly speak on some general registration questions because there seems to be a lot. If you're able to join us on April 20th, most of these questions will be answered. As I've noted, the sessions are recorded. So once you get access to the D2L, understanding not everybody has it yet, um, you will get it. There is a significant amount of information available to you. Most of my sessions are recorded, so you can watch them at your leisure. So on April 20th, we're gonna go over the, the 10 courses and what the blocks mean, that there's space for everybody, that you're picking your preference for synchronous or asynchronous, meaning when you need to be in class or when you choose to be in class and when you can do the work um, independently if needed. We'll go over transfer credit. Okay, you will be identified um, through the survey if you have transfer credit. Um, what does that mean? An IB, an AP credit, course or an, a university course that you've already taken. At this time, stay enrolled in all 10 first year courses until you can verify through either your online student center that you have transfer credit or through the engineering student center that you have transfer credit. Okay, um, I saw a lot of questions about delayed marks. We are aware of that. We are still seeing it. The registrar's office does deal with that and the admissions office. So they will be reviewing those that your files accordingly. And then ultimately, um, any 
ifs, ands, or buts. If you're coming to us with a reduced course load, if you're coming to us um, through a varsity or with a post-secondary grade. So these will all be reviewed on the 20th and have already been reviewed. If you have access to the D2L, you can go and take a look at those sessions. They have been posted already. So hopefully the general, this is kind of the welcome hi and um, the registration session on the 20th, we'll get into the more details. I also want to add in for anyone, there's quite a few questions about when will you get access to D2L. Um, it is not something that happens instantaneously. So just know that by mid June, everyone who is accepted and paid their deposit will retain, will, will um, get <laughs> access to D2L by mid June. It is not instantaneous. Uh, this, the university is getting everyone into the system as quickly as possible but it is linked to the, the preparation for fall. Also noting, we will be doing the registration for you. You do not have to do anything other than complete the survey. You do not have to work through schedule builder. You do not have to do anything. Um, there is an initialization of your file, which we can review on the 20th, but there is nothing <clears throat> required for you to do. Um, you do not have to add courses to your cart. You do not have to add schedule builder. As I said, sit back, relax, and enjoy your Slurpee. Honestly, all you have to do is the survey. There is, it's quite lovely for you guys. So it is as simple as that. Sit back and relax. Uh, tailing on to what Janelle said, there is a couple of questions about how do you know when you've completed the survey? You will get the link in an email. Once you've clicked the link, there are six questions. Once you complete that last question, it, the final one will just be submit. If you try to access the link again, it will say you've already completed it. So there is no email confirming. Just know once you hit submit, if you go back to the link and it says it's done, it is done. Um, so there is no need to double check. Um, once we are doing the registration, which will be in line with the enrollment dates, um, you will get a notice telling you which block you'll be in. So don't worry, basically between now and early May, really there's not a lot of other things to do other than to learn as much as you can about your first year. And the best way to do that, like Janelle has said, is to potentially attend that next session, which we'll get into the more specifics of, you know, what will that, uh, what will that entail? So um, relax, enjoy, get excited for first year and focus on the parts of school you're still having to complete in the high school. I want to send a huge thank you out to Camilla, Juan, and Alan, our students, for being participants today, and Camilla for walking us through and just sharing your experience. It's been hugely helpful. There's a couple other questions in the chat that I'm going to just remind you of. One is that you are currently students as of fall 2021, so there's a lot of questions about taking courses in summer. You can take courses in summer if you register as an open study student. You will not have access to engineering courses because those are designed for students to catch up in their summer. So it's not a get ahead program, it's a catch up program. If next year you miss a course in your first year, you'll be given that same priority to complete that over the summer. The second question I'm seeing a lot of is awards and scholarships. So I have put the link for the awards page. Um, our office and the team here can support you with any academic question around engineering. Um, but the awards and finances are dealt with separately. So if you have a question about an award, whether you got one, whether you didn't, whether you're being considered, what your tuition costs are, those are best directed to our central team and awards and finances. We won't be able to answer those for you. The second question I'm seeing quite a bit is admission averages. So I'm just gonna address that generally because we actually don't release admission averages. What we tell students is that we're a really competitive program. And if you are in the mid eighties or above, you should consider applying. If you have a specific question about your admission or your offer of admission, specifically that your grades have dropped uh, for any reason from your admission date until now, or what you will be on your final transcript, that is a question that we would encourage you to send to the admissions team. 
Um, so we, you know, if you email us at NGINFO, we're happy to forward it for you, but we don't actually, again, once you're admitted to engineering and you've paid your deposit, which everyone on this call has, uh, we, you become our student. And so then we answer all your questions, but we don't release admission averages, nor do we release transfer averages because it's competitive based. So it really depends on the applicant pool that applies in terms of what that final average ends up being. Marwa, Anyone else with the same question? Oh, perfect, Rebecca. Marwa or Jenny, can one of you speak to, there are several students who are looking for links that they didn't get to other sessions, such as the Haas game for combined degrees or some of the other ones where um, they may be. Is there somewhere they can go to get the links for those UU Calgary sessions? So I can speak to that. There's nowhere to share. We don't have the links to share with you, but similar to our session being recorded, those sessions will also be recorded. So for a dual degree student, as long as you attended you at UCalgary, you will still be uh, given if you attended the whole thing and you've scanned this QR code and completed the access survey, then you will be given early registration. And your next option will be to actually watch those online as they're posted over the next week. I noticed a question about when is the survey due? You'll want to do the survey as soon as you can. Uh, beyond the students that attend today by um, acknowledging their attendance through the QR code or the link we have shared. Um, after that, it will simply be first come first serve. So the sooner students accept their, their, sorry, accept their offer to the school, the sooner they pay the deposit, attend you at U Calgary and answer the survey, it is first come first serve. So again, we cannot guarantee every preference, but we will do everything we can to try to help people be able to study in the time of day that is the most conducive to their in-class learning time. I hear a question from uh, Marissa about um, combined degrees and will we still be registered for all our classes? Chanel, can I pass that to you? Yes, so um, ultimately if you have transfer credit or have a uh, combined degree admission, we at engineering highly recommend you prioritize your first 10, 10 courses in engineering because they are required to be cleared at the end of your winter term in order to be guaranteed your placement into your major. So it is really important that you prioritize them. If you have transfer credit or as we said, IB or AP credit, uh, you may have spaces in your schedule to put in those courses, but it is recommended. So if you are um, in the business dual degree you've been admitted, we recommend you hold off on your business courses until you start your second year and you're placed in your program. If you're admitted into another dual degree, um, ultimately the responsibility for course planning and scheduling is, on, uh, is yours. But again, being that the first 10 courses are required for your major placement, it's recommended you concentrate on engineering first. You do have eight years to complete your engineering degree, nine if you go on internship. So we can space out. And if you are going into the business, it's a, usually a five-year program. And if you have another dual degree, it is definitely going to be spaced out more than the four years. So the importance as per an engineering faculty is you want to concentrate on that. If you do have space in your schedule, like I mentioned, and you want to place one of your dual degree courses in there, noting that that course will be taken into the calculation for program placement. So not only do you have to do well in that course and maintain the standard to get um, your guarantee, in that course, it also will be counted in the review and in program placement calculation. So I, I also saw, uh, again, a lot of questions about um, the transfer credit. Right now, once we've enrolled you, please stay in all 10 of your courses until it is confirmed you have the transfer credit. The transfer credit is through your online student center. There's a transfer credit report. If it's an upper level credit, that may have to be processed at a department level, and that does take some time. So stay enrolled in all 10 courses when we enroll you until it's confirmed you have the credit and then you can action the drop. That will again be reviewed in the April 20th session, which also another session was recorded and posted to the D2L. So this information's out there and it's available to you. But as we're saying here, please just sit back and relax. We've got the time for you to review and we are really looking forward to you doing well in your school right now and joining us in the fall. Thanks, Janelle. There was a question too about on-campus jobs. So I'm assuming that means kind of part-time work. So first I would say engineering is a very demanding course load. 
Um, you know, it is possible to work part time, but many students find that overwhelming. And so we would really encourage you to focus first on your academics and then on work. In terms of on campus jobs, there are campus positions posted. Uh, if you look at the University of Calgary, if you set up your internal email, you'll be able to access that. There are careers posted there. And there's also a job board centrally that you can look at for general jobs, such as working in residence or food services or on campus in some other type of capacity. I'll just speak to the April 20th session again. There is no registration required. It is a, a drop-in session, so you don't need to register. I'm putting the link in the chat again. So it's just the actual link to the chat on the 20th. So it is um, no registration required for that. You can just show up. Uh, it is only required to come to one. It's the same information repeated. We've done a few already. So you can just do the um, come to the one on the 20th if you wish. I also just saw a question that is quite good for students looking um, to understand how the work visas work for internship and practicum. We are not immigration advisors, so please note, if you have extremely specific questions, there is a group called International Student Services on campus who will be able to help any student go over what does their study permit say, what type of work visas would they require, that sort of a thing. But in general, um, while the internship is not a required program, if a student chooses to apply to it and make it part of their degree, once they are accepted, it then becomes part of their degree, which does actually allow you to apply for a work visa if you are an international student, because at that point, when you've added it to your degree, it is now a required part of your degree. So again, while it's not an absolute, you have to do this, once you choose to, um, that becomes part of your degree, a degree which allows you to meet the government regulations for being able to potentially obtain a co-op internship work permit, which is different than a regular work permit. So just know that for summers, for the practicum program, that sort of thing, those things are not considered required as part of your program. So again, that will be based on your study permit and the guides that it gives you around working. And if you have any questions about the details on your study permit, you should speak to someone in international student services. I can speak to the question from Erica around biology and physics. So if you have completed physics 30, you won't be considered for the bio, for the bio institute, which was something that was a, uh, introduced two years ago in order to allow students who chose to take biology instead of physics early in their high school career and they do a summer institute in August that is essentially an opportunity for them to gain the knowledge they need to be successful in first year. If you have Physics 30, that mark will be used to calculate your admission. If you have specific questions about your admissions, again, admissions is the place to go. If you email us, we will definitely forward you um, to those admissions and the email address is on your screen right now, engineinfo at ucalgary.ca. Somebody mentioned that the link to the survey is not working right now. We're going to um, work on that. If you're able to scan the QR code with your phone, um, just take a picture of it. That usually will take you right to the link. But um, I am, we are working on getting the survey link um, working. So I just tested it. The survey link is working. I used it on Google Chrome. So perhaps if anyone is using it on another browser, they may want to try Chrome, but the survey link that we just posted a minute ago is working. I see a question on here if you want to enroll in the soccer club. So great question. There's a lot of other things. We focused on what's available in engineering. But there certainly are things outside of engineering. And so I would really encourage you to actually use the UCalgary website. Um, the details on joining soccer or any other intramural team uh, are available, as well as the details if you want to try out for one of the varsity teams. And a couple of questions I just saw about the blocks. So at this point in time, um, anyone who had accepted their offer and paid their $500 prior to Thursday has already received or should have already received a welcome email from us as well as a separate email that included your link to the Common Core survey. 
if you don't think that you have gotten it, please check any email account that you may have been using as part of your application process. Because I have noted that a lot of students were using the UCalgary, but not everyone. So please do check your personal email, including your junk files and make sure you mark NGINFO as a safe sender. Um, but please do check there. Please check your UCalgary account if you have it set up. If you cannot find it and you accepted your offer again prior to Thursday, um, please do send an email to nginfo at ucalgary.ca um, and we can look about look at uh, reissuing that, um, that survey link to you. It is proprietary to you when you answer it. Um, it needs to be your answers because it will associate to your actual account. I've had a question personally on the chat um, around which engineering disciplines are the most ranked and what are the, what's the seat capacity, how many students can each department accept. So I want to just refer you back to a couple slides previously where we talked about program placement. We have a guaranteed program placement. So if you join the university and you have a 90% or above from your high school, you need to maintain a 2.7, a B GPA in order to be guaranteed your first choice program placement. If you join the university with less than a 90% from high school, you need to maintain a 3.0 for program placement guarantee. If you fit neither of those categories, we still help you. So there are lots of options with regards to program placement. We have a number of minors. Throughout your first year, you're going to have access to a number of different sessions from industry partners, from our academics, from student groups to talk about what are the different types of engineering. Because in our experience, the Common Core gives you the best of both worlds. You get to see what engineering is before you make a commitment into which degree path you want to go into. So those are great questions, but they absolutely will be answered as you continue throughout your first year. I'll speak a little bit to some of the math questions that we are seeing. Um, we are aware of some math um, alternate pathways. So if you've taken an upper level math course, an IB or AB course, we are aware of it. We have a contingency for it. You're going to note in the survey that you will have credit and we will work with you to build your schedule accordingly. And what that will be called is an alternate math pathway. So we do know of it and we are aware of it and we have documents for you to review about it. Also some great questions about the weather here in Calgary. Um, as a joke, it's supposed to be um, 19 Celsius today and like minus two Celsius tomorrow. So that is Calgary in a nutshell for you. Um, for all of you guys here that are asking those questions, we do do some larger block building um, sessions throughout the summer where you can have the opportunity to meet your fellow students in your block and you can have these conversations. And so we do have those type of questions, residents questions, sports questions, um, gym questions, cafeteria questions, we do have all that information for you and we will be doing it throughout the summer. So watch your UCalgary email for invites to those sessions. I'll ultimately, if you have a question about the library, the bookstore, any of those questions, we are going to go through over the summer. So you have time to review those questions. So um, yes, it is beautifully warm today. We are in shorts, but we will be back in our parkas tomorrow. I see a question about residence notice. Um, so that's a really good question. I'm actually going to just Google the residence webpage because those are the type of questions that even though we're all one U Calgary, we can certainly redirect to. We don't have that information. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the residence notice is coming out, but I know that it will be before, uh, before the start of the term. So I'm going to put the resident services homepage up here on the chat. Can oh. go ahead and contact them directly. Just so you know, Jenny, we're just having a little trouble hearing you, but I believe Jenny was just saying that she's going to put the residence link into the chat um, and she'll be able and you'll be able to contact with them directly that way. Um, I also noticed a note um, in regards to the blocks. We did put up a link a little earlier in the survey. Um, an actual document that you can download before we close off the chat today. Um, if you want to take a closer look at the blocks, they are also available on D2L for any of you that have access to D2L, but that same document is the document that we've shared on D2L. 
I have noted a few questions too about the deposit. Yes, the deposit is a requirement before your file is technically transferred over to engineering, which means we will not have your information. So unable to send you the email or give you access to the D2L. So the deposit is required. If you've missed any deadlines, you know, registration or our missions office will work with you and we will get you added. But the deposit is a requirement before we can um, start accessing your file and getting information out to you. Also, there's been quite a few questions about the math 31. While we can't get into anyone's specific cases here, a general rule of thumb is if you are in Canada studying and you are taking, have taken or will be taking between now and obviously the end of your school year, math 31, you just wanna, you have no special math considerations, you're on track. If you are a student internationally who has or will be taking before the end of your school year, um, your highest level of calculus, that generally would be the same thing as Math 31. Again, it comes down to specific situations that will actually be answered by admissions based on your transcripts when they're received. But as a general rule of thumb, again, if you're taking it now, you have no special considerations. If you're an international student, your, your translatable um, course would be a, the highest senior level calculus that your school offers. As we're coming to a close, I just wanna invite our student panel participants and also our MC, Camilla. Is there anything that you would share with these students knowing that you were in this position a short time ago, you know, in terms of your best piece of advice, what would that look like? Uh, personally for me, it would be to get involved. And I know that you hear that quite often from students, but it really makes the experience different. It's it's you have your academics, but outside of academics, you should have something else to develop yourself. You know, it, it just completes the experience of Schulich um, and your university experience in general. So I would highly, highly recommend doing some clubs, doing some teams, doing anything that interests you. Um, and that will definitely complete your experience much more than just doing the academic part. Juan and Alan? Yeah, just, uh, I guess, adding up to that piece of advice, like, I know it's really hard. It's, like, really easy to think, get involved, but, like, once you're actually in that position, like, I found myself in first year, you're kind of overwhelmed with, like, all these courses, so many things thrown on you, so just try to take a breather, try to, like, calm down and just see all the options you have available, and then just make that effort to just attend the info session, and just make, just going to that info session is already, like, super good that rather not attending to anything. And that kind of gives you a, like a, like some kind of like a sneak peek of what you will be doing if you join that certain club or team. And I just think like just joining those uh, those clubs like really, really enhance uh, your student experience and does really help you build that resume and it will help you like for me personally that helped me uh, obtain a research job this summer because my supervisor was really impressed on how I was involved in the school community so that's something that I I tell I told my mentee in the mentorship program this year so just to get involved try to do try to look for things that you like and uh, just try to get to take a breather and have that balance between uh, academics and 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 clubs yeah No, I definitely agree with both Camilla and Juan. You know, we have a lot of teams on campus, a lot of opportunities on top of your regular courses to do. Um, I would definitely recommend doing it in your first year. You know, your first year is going to be a bit hard, but then it's going to get harder as you progress. So it's easier to start right in first year because then you'll be open to all those opportunities. Another thing I would recommend you guys to do is to focus on your time management. You're going to have a lot of courses. There's going to be like, you know, you're going to have like instances where you might have like four or five assignments doing like a couple weeks, or you might have like two or three tests in the week, and you'll have sort of situations where you're fresh, pressured for time. And those kind of things, it's really essential to learn about time management, how to make a schedule, how to plan your studying and all that kind of stuff. And that's one reason why it's good to join the engineering leadership program. There is a session on time management. So you learn about how to make a proper schedule. Um, you know, making a daily planner, that kind of stuff. If you already do that, that's great. Um, 
it's definitely a good thing to focus on. Um, I believe also the Engineering Student Center as well, they can help you with that. If you're ever feeling stressed or overwhelmed during the school year, you can always talk to them and they'll help you organize your time and all that kind of stuff. Those are great pieces of advice. And I just wanna again say a huge thank you to Camilla for being our MC, Juan and Alan and Dr. Rosehart for providing a great overview of Schulich. My name's Jenny. We are super excited to welcome you to the campus in the fall. Um, whatever that looks like, we are super happy to answer any questions you have. Like I said, Eng info. If it's not a question we can answer, we will absolutely point you in the right direction to get you the information you need. This ends the official portion of the event. And so make sure you have scanned the QR code and answered the uh, survey questions. Um, and you're welcome to continue posting messages in the chat. Our advising team will stay on the call to answer any questions. If you have a personal question, please email us at enginfo at ucalgary.ca. And thanks again for a great presentation, everyone.